She has been missing for almost a year after supposedly going for a bike ride on Mother's Day weekend. Today, an arrest in the disappearance of Col a Colorado woman, the husband of Suzanne Morphew, is now facing several charges, even though he initially made a tearful plea for her return. News Nation's Deborah Takahara has that story tonight from Chafee County. Barry Morphew is being held here in the Chafee County Jail on charges of first degree murder. The sheriff says it was not one thing that led to his arrest, rather the culmination of hundreds of searches and interviews they have conducted over the past year. Today make, marks a major milestone in this investigation. Of Suzanne Morphy's disappearance. The Salida community came together once again for news they have been waiting a year to hear. I think there's a, a sense of relief in the community. Today is a good day for Suzanne. As far as I'm concerned, today is all about Suzanne. And it's about her family. And it's about all the individuals that knew her and loved her and cared about her. That's what this day is about. And it's a good day. 49-year-old Suzanne Morphew was reported missing on Mother's Day last year after going for a bike ride. Her bike was recovered just a half mile from the family's home. Investigators followed up on hundreds of tips and volunteers spent thousands of hours searching, but she has never been found. There were several searches in the area along Highway 50 near the base of Monarch Pass. Just a few days ago, Barry and the girls placed the statue near where Suzanne's bike was found. Barry Morphew had been the subject of a lot of public scrutiny about his whereabouts the weekend his wife vanished. The sheriff understands why people in the community grew frustrated and wanted answers. Today is not the day for celebration, nor does it mark the end of this investigation. Rather, it's the next step of this very difficult yet very important journey as we seek justice for Suzanne and her family. Barry Morphew will make his first court appearance tomorrow here at 1030 in the morning. He is facing charges of first degree murder, tampering with evidence and trying to influence a public servant. Reporting from Chafee County, Colorado, Deborah Takahara, News Nation. And for more on this now, I want to bring in former FBI agent Gina Osborne. She's host of the True Crime podcast called Behind the Crime Scene. Thanks so much for being with us, Gina. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. For folks who have not followed this uh, closely, uh, explain kind of why it became so high profile and what did you make of the developments today? You know, it's, I think it's because you have this 49-year-old wife and mother of two, and she really wasn't a high target of any sort, and she went missing. And I think, as we've seen in other cases in the past, where the husband actually is the one who gets arrested for the murder or disappearance of the wife, uh, I, I think it's just a fascinating case. And the specific charges in this case, what kind, if convicted, of course, and we'll see what plays out at, at the trial or if there's a plea deal, but what, uh, what sticks out to you about the charges themselves in this? Well, the fact that he's being charged with first degree murder, which means that he deliberately and premeditated, those are, those are the charges against him, uh, and the murder of Suzanne. Also, two other charges that came up, the attempting to influence a public servant, that's very interesting, as well as uh, tampering with evidence. And all of those charges, uh, according to court documents that were reported uh, took place on May 10th, the day that Suzanne disappeared. Mm. And what broke this case open today? You know, I don't know if there was necessarily anything that broke it open. Uh, according to the sheriff, there were 70 different investigators working on this case. 135 search warrants took place. 400 interviews and over 1,400 tips. So I think it was just a long-term, enormous investigation with local, state, and federal uh, law enforcement agencies. And it took them this amount of time in order to have a strong case against uh, Barry and Murphy. And last question before we let you go. Any expectations for what uh, the trial may bring? I think that's going to be very interesting as well because there were a lot of different allegations that came up against Barry uh, with regard to uh, employees saying that he allegedly rented a hotel room and that hotel room smelled like chlorine. There were a, vari a variety of different things, but really I'm interested in hearing, you know, what evidence that he tampered with and who he tried to influence in order to get out. And this is all, these are all allegations, of course, but that, that's what's going to come out in the trial. Gene Osborne, thanks so much for giving us a few minutes tonight. We appreciate it. My pleasure.